Hi, this is Janine Sows. I talk about sewing for a woman over 50. In today's video, I'm going to share with you my um, results from using the top-down, center-out method of pant fitting as created by Ruth Collins. Before I get started, I just want to thank everyone who has watched my videos. New subscribers, continuing subscribers, and those who have just dropped in. I have not responded to a lot of the comments in the last video because honestly, I've been under the weather for well over two weeks now, and I am very much feeling alive and ready to go now, so I'll be catching up on the comments. But I do want to say thank you for watching. I am wearing a Love Notions Rhapsody blouse that I made in quilting cotton from Rick Rack Textiles here in Calgary. And the fabric has little cowboy boots all over it and I got this fabric and made this top for Calgary Stampede. I did wear this to the Stampede a few times, out stampeding. Um, I used brown bias tape to emulate the look of leather lashings because it was kind of a Western thing. Quilting cotton is a little bit heavy for this pattern, but I loved the print and I think it works okay. It was a little warm for the weather that we had, but generally it was a fun top, it was something unique and I enjoyed wearing it. I did do a little bit of embroidery around the sleeve. I've done this a couple of times and it's something that I've stolen from people on Instagram. Just so I remembered what I made this for. And I made this for Stampede 2022. In my last video, I shared with you my plans for my basic wardrobe. And unfortunately, because I wasn't well, I didn't really get to work on those projects because I had to get some patterns and some other things and I didn't feel comfortable going out. Um, these days, if you're not well, you don't want to leave the house at all. So instead, I worked on pants that I had mentioned to you the last time and a couple of other projects. So in my last video, I told you I was going to try making pants using the top-down center-out method. I showed you a piece of fabric I had, which is a linen, and it's kind of a goldy brown color, which isn't my color, but someone brilliantly suggested that I dye it, so I am considering doing that. I've never dyed fabric before. I'm going to see how much I wear these, and if I love them and I'm wearing them a lot, I might try to dye them. But let's talk about this method. If you want a quick summary, this is it. Two thumbs up. I really like this pant fitting method. Let's talk a little bit about it and why it worked for me and why it might work for you. I had seen people talk about the top down center out method on Instagram where you can find it hashtag top down center out and that's center spelt c-e-n-t-e-r not r-e but then in the summer 2022 edition of Threads magazine, there it was. Fit pants solo. Hallelujah. So when I saw the article in Threads, I knew I just had to give this a try. Because like so many of us, I don't have anyone to help me fit. And I have a middle-aged body. My waist is thickened, I've got a belly, and I've got what I call a shelf butt. So it's always a real challenge and it's very disheartening when I try to sew pants. So I thought I'd give this a try. This method was designed by Ruth Collins and Ruth has approached pant fitting as one would an engineering project. She thought about how do pants fit? Pants hang from our waist, the area of our waist. We don't fit them up from the crotch, they hang down. It's gravity and it's how the fabric drapes. So that's what she starts with. If you want to try this method, I'd say check her stories on Instagram, but more than that, get this edition of Threads magazine. You can probably get it in newsstands all over the place or you can get it online. So this is the article. It's 10 pages and it walks you very clearly how to do the fitting. Now I'm not going to give you all the details because I will certainly miss things and I'm just a newbie myself. 
but I'm gonna tell you how it worked for me. So I started with that first piece of linen. And with this method, you start with something that has a waistband and it's recommended that you use a woven. So I had that linen and a pattern because I was digging around and using what I had at home. I used Simplicity 8848 and this is a pair of sort of cropped woven pants. They're super loose fitting. They're super loose fitting. Now the only thing that's wrong with this pattern for the um, for Ruth Collins instructions is that it has a partially elasticated waist but I've just made it work because that's the pattern that I had. So the way this works, you make the waistband, you decide where you want things to fit from, where they're gonna hang from, then you do a half twall. You just do one leg. You make sure that you've got two mirrors so you can see the front and the back, and you put on the waistband, you step into the leg, and you start pinning, and you see how things hang. I spent probably a total of, grand total, of maybe 25 minutes attempting to fit these. That was it. Then I felt confident enough to go and cut the fabric and sew them. Super, super simple. I cannot tell you what a re revelation it was to not have to pin around a crotch, take them off, baste it, see what worked. Oh, well I did that in the front, now it's impacted that in the back. There's none of that. This is really easy and it all makes sense from an engineering standpoint. So let me show you how my pattern wound up being adjusted after using this method. So as I said, I've got a belly. And what do we need to go over a belly? We could make the front crotch seem like that, or we can add more fabric. Pretty smart, huh? So this is the front of my pattern. And you can see where I added fabric here. I added three centimeters at the front center and then tapered at the side because I have this belly here that this has to cover. Didn't touch the crotch curve. And the other thing that's interesting about this is you hem your toile to make sure that it's gonna be the right length. So I added um, a couple of inches onto the bottom. The other thing that's different about this pant fitting method is that you, f you make sure that you measure your hips when you're sitting so that the pants don't crawl down when you sit down. So I actually wound up using a size that fits my waist. My waist is proportionally bigger than my hips. So normally I cut for my hips, I think it's all just vanity, <laughs> cut for my hips and make the waist bigger. This time I actually used my waist size and it means that when I sit in these pants, they don't crawl down. I don't get a plumber's crack in them. So you can see that I added on the front, but let's see what I did on the back. On the back, I took off. So I added a little bit at the side, but here I took off almost as much at the back as I, did at the, as I added on the front. And again, I didn't touch the crotch. It was a very interesting, different way to sew because I did the toile and then I felt completely confident to sew the pants once I had marked up the pattern and cut the fabric. All in. Total time spent, under three hours. And I'm going to show you the pants here. I'm going to talk over it a little bit. As I said, they're super wide-legged. This is not my preferred style. But for linen pants, it's kind of an okay style. The pants do have pockets, but they hang really well, especially when I'm standing still. And I think it's almost impossible to have things fit perfectly for when you're walking. But when I'm standing still, they drape perfectly. There are no creases. There are no drag lines. So I am very, very happy and I was so enthusiastic after I made these. It felt so good to know that I could sew up a pair of pants in a few hours and not have to mess around with pins and crotch curves and those bendable rulers and all of that stuff. This made sense 
and this worked. But this was a really loose fitting pair of pants. So I decided to give it a try on something else. Because I was unwell and I was stuck in the house and I had a little bit of time, I decided to grab what I had here and see what I could do for another attempt for maybe a more fitted pair of pants. So I dug around my fabric and I found a piece of denim twill that I got at Fabric Mart a few years ago. It has about 10% stretch. And then I searched for patterns and of course I needed a pattern that has a waistband. That was the challenge and I don't have a lot of patterns that have waistbands. Honestly, I don't have a lot of patterns for pants. So I grabbed Simplicity 8744. I made these pants before. I made them last fall. I didn't even realize this until I was halfway through, which kind of tells you how my head was working when I was not well. But I used this pattern, and this is one of those Simplicity Perfect Fit patterns, amazing fit. So I had used this before, and the fit was okay, but the crotch was way too short. The front, it's way too short. It doesn't look good. So I always wear something long enough to hide that, and I kind of hit it. I didn't really notice it so much until I saw the video and the pictures in the video that I did on these pants. So I used this. Now, the problem with this was the fabric that I used had a little bit of stretch. And I am still learning this, so I should have used something that was just a woven. But instead, I started with the waistband, and I interfaced it so that there was no stretch in the waistband. And I started from there. Now, other problem. Because I was sick and not leaving the house, I didn't have any fabric for a toile. So I broke the rules completely, and I used the fabric that I was going to use to make the half toile. I just made sure that the seam allowances were huge, and I would be able to cut things back as needed. So that's what I did. There was really only one problem with this particular version of the pants. And I'm going to tell you about that and then I'm going to show you what I did with the pattern pieces on this one. Now this pattern has a very wide waistband and I decided it should be higher on my belly. So these are very high waisted. They turned out much higher waisted than I had planned. But that's where I fit things to. So that was my mistake. With this method of pattern fitting, you decide where you want the waistband to be. I decided to place it too high on my body. So that was my mistake and I made these super high waisted. That won't be so much of an issue unless I lose weight and then they're gonna fall right down. But I'm treating these as a work in progress. It was an attempt, certainly a wearable attempt. Anyways, so I used the fabric for a self twall and I'll show you the changes that I made to the pattern. Another thing I'm gonna show you I used these pattern pieces last fall and the markings for the crotch lines are still on there. So I'm going to show you the difference. So here's the back. And this is what I added in the back because I made them so darn high waisted. So I added in the back. There is a pleat there. Yes, you do use the pleat. But here, this is interesting. You see the pink lines? That's how I changed the crotch curve the last time I made these. Interesting, huh? Better fit just by doing this. And then the front, the pattern actually has a pocket. I didn't use the pocket, so I just pinned the pocket to the pattern piece. So here's the front, shaped very different. I added a little bit, not as much. And again, this was the crotch line that I did last time. And that's, I mean, that. I'm not going to use the word, but you know the word when the crotch is too short. That's what I have with these. And I wound up slimming them a little bit too on the side. So that version turned out well. They certainly hang better than the last pair that I made, but I made them too high waisted. But they're wearable. I will not use that pattern again and primarily because that pattern has an invisible zip on the side and I hate invisible zip on pants. 
They just aren't sturdy enough. So what I'm looking for for the next iteration is semi-fitted pants that have a waistband that I will put mid-rise. I have to do that using this method. That's my choice where the waistband is. And with either a front fly or a lapped front or lapped side zip. That's what I'm looking for. I have to show you these pants, don't I? So here I'm gonna pop these up. They're very comfortable. The fabric is really, really nice. I very much like this fabric, but I made them way too high-waisted. Now the bonuses, high-waisted with nothing on them. I can wear all kinds of different tops over them and there won't be any buttons or tabs or anything that grab on the top. But if I lose weight, and I am working on that actively, then they're gonna be pretty, they're gonna hang down a little bit. So I'll cross that bridge when I come to it. The summary of the top down center out method is, it's really good. It was so much easier and less frustrating to make these two pair of pants than anything I've done in the past. And I've used those fitting pant guides. I've got books, I've watched videos. Everything takes hours and hours and hours and hours. And you really need somebody to help you. You can do this on your own if you have two mirrors. And you can, you can figure out a way to have two mirrors. But you can do this. This is immensely easier. I don't know why nobody thought of this before, but Ruth Collins, good job. This is really good. And it makes sense from an engineering perspective, from a structural perspective. That's why this works. It often feels like other methods of pant fitting, it's, well, try this and see if this works, but there's no science to it. This is science. If you have a belly, add fabric to cover the belly. You don't have to change the crotch curve. And you know, this is the interesting thing. I always wondered why ready to wear pants always fit. And they all basically have the same crotch curve. It's because of the way that they are fitting up to the waistband. Now I'm not, ready to wear doesn't work for everybody. But there's a reason why there's no changes in crotch curve and ready to wear. And I think Ruth has found the secret sauce. So if you want to give this a try, I encourage you to. I hope it works as well for you as it did for me. But I'm really enthused about making pants now. It's something I want to do. I'm keen. I'm not afraid of it. I would rather try and make my own pants than go to a store. And it was so fast, it's probably easier than me driving to a mall, parking and going trying on things. So again, Ruth Collins created this method. She's Ithaca Maven on Instagram, and you can find out all the details in the Summer 22 Threads Magazine Fit Pants Solo. I hope, it, if you give it a try, I really hope it works as well for you as it did for me. Not perfect, but huge leap forward. I want to quickly tell you about the top that I was wearing with those pants, and that is something that I made when I was under the weather. And that is the Curso top from Cashmerettes Ahead of the Curve book. This pattern is for a woven, it's a woven tank top. And why I picked this pattern is because I had two really pretty pieces of cotton and steel rayon. And when I bought them, I didn't realize they were only 45 inches wide. So I didn't have enough fabric to make anything. And then I found this pattern and it is lined on the inside which meant that I could use the fashion fabric for the exterior and lining fabric for the, for the lining on the inside, which is exactly what I did. And I could do the front, the outside, in just under a yard and a half, which is perfect. I think this is gonna be my TNT woven tank top pattern. Um, I like the slight V, it's not too deep. It, the way the straps are, cover the bra straps, so it's something that can be worn in the summer without a jacket, or I can wear it in the fall or winter or spring with a jacket or a cardigan. 
and it's a nice shape. It's got nice shaping. It's got the seam in the back, which can give you more shaping opportunities. But Curso Tank, I very much like it. It is just wonderful that it actually happens to work with the linen pants that I made. And it's going to fit a lot of holes in my wardrobe. The second piece of fabric that I have that I'm going to use to make the same top matches my navy basic wardrobe stuff. So I'm excited about that too. Next up, of course, is my basics wardrobe. I have to pick up a piece of fabric to use for a toile for the pants and have a couple of patterns printed, but otherwise I'm ready to go. I'll load up the serger and the cover stitch with navy thread and hopefully just plow through that stuff really quickly. I'm feeling very invigorated about my sewing now that I had such a good result. Not perfect, but a good result from the top down center out method. If you give it a try, I hope you let me know how it goes. Again, my pants are not perfect, but they are sure better than things that I've produced in the past and it was so much easier and it was an enjoyable way to sew pants. I hope you're well. Hope you're enjoying the summer and I will see you again really soon. Thank you so much for watching.